Good morning, everyone. Eric Whirlin here, and I'm here with Mark Rivers, who works on the animated show Big Mouth. How are you doing this morning? I'm okay. I'm all right. Thank you. <laughs> Tell us uh, what exactly it is you do when it comes to this uh, animated TV show. I am the show's uh, music composer, so I do all the uh, score for the, you know, the, um, the underscoring, and as, uh, I write uh, original songs as well. The show occasionally features um, hilarious uh, music numbers that are often sung by the characters, and uh, I write those too. Awesome. Sounds like it's a pretty fun job, right? Yeah, it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. It's uh, you know, the, the funnest part is definitely writing the songs. Um, you know, it's better than some of the other jobs I've done in my life. You know, I, uh, dog walker. I was a professional dog walker for a while, so uh, that was pretty fun. That was probably maybe my second most fun job. Have any of your past jobs influenced uh, what you're doing now with music? And, like, do you pull on anything from your past, uh, you know, experiences and events that influence what you do? Well, uh, only in that I played in rock bands for a long time. So, you know, that's where my, my sensibilities um, are sort of, that's the, the, the base of my sensibilities is playing um, pop and rock music. Um, so that's sort of my foundation. And I guess that is always there, you know, that certainly influences my, the, uh, my songwriting and my... Uh, and when it comes to the poppier stuff, that's that feels like it's most in my wheelhouse, you know, as opposed to say orchestral or uh, urban music or whatever. I uh, uh, um, I definitely would put that first and foremost as far as musical styles go. That's that's what I come from. Awesome. Now, one thing that I've always wondered, because uh, I mean, music is such an important part when it comes to, e the, especially the visual arts, when it's e whether it's movies or TVs, the music and the score and everything plays such an influence on the mood and everything. Tell us about the process of like how you come up with like, okay, I know what I want this to sound like, and getting the right instruments. Like, what's that process like? Well, it's sort of a, it's a little collaborative with the creators because they. Uh, you know, of course, have a sense of what they want the musical voice of the show to be. And that was sort of, you know, early on, that was, we spent a lot of time exploring that. Like, initially we thought th there could be this sort of um, jazz piano uh, throughout and that everything would be more um, sort of, I, I don't know, I, I guess I was reminded, uh, because it's a show about kids, but it's with this adult voice, um, of the early Charlie Brown specials and the Vince Guaraldi stuff, and I thought, you know, that could be a cool thing to s slightly reference. Um, but we wound up not going that direction. We got rid of all that stuff, and now, really, I just, I, I do, most of what I do is scoring the, uh, the high drama moments, you know? I'm not doing much comedy music scoring, you know? There, I'm not, you're, you're rarely scoring the comedy. Um, so... I guess in the moments that I'm scoring for this show, really, it's it's about scoring those the the the, the, the heavy drama or the intense emotion. You're you're kind of scoring the story more than you are the comedy, and because it's animated, you tend to make things a bit more arch and really heavily orchestral. You know, to listen to it alone, you wouldn't suppose it's just a kid who's afraid of his you know his first hard on. <laughs> you would think you would think something much more dire is happening, and sort of I guess that yeah. sort of lends, that sort of heightens the comedy. You know? I think those who have been in that situation can definitely, yeah, yeah. you know, can definitely relate to 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 the sca how scary something like that is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's horrifying. We've yeah. never had a, a hard on. It's <laughs> terrifying. That's the overwhelming. That's the lasting uh, effect. Of it, yeah. So. So, how did you come to be working on this show? Did were, did you approach someone about it, or did you hear about it, or did, did do you know someone who approached? How did that happen? No, I had worked with Nick Kroll previously on uh, the Kroll Show, which is a Comedy Central show, and uh, done a lot of music for that. Um, there were some featured songs here and there. So he and I had this relationship um, from several years ago, and. I came into that by, I was a writer on that show, sort of a part-time writer and part-time composer on that show. And uh, 
that's how I established the relationship with uh, with these guys in this show. Yeah. Just I'm just out of for my own curiosity. I'm sure the viewers would like to know this as well. How did you come into wanting to be composing for you know for the not just the show but in general? I know you said you've been in music and everything, but like. What was it, moment was it where like, yes, this is what I want to do. I, this, is, this is my calling. Well, it's funny because I, I didn't really, I didn't move when I moved to Los Angeles from Boston. I didn't come here to, like, I'm going to be a TV composer. <laughs> I had done uh, one uh, TV show theme song for a friend of mine, this show called uh, Mr. Show with Bob and David for HBO back in uh, like 94. And I thought, I'll go to L.A. and maybe I'll write theme songs or something. And when I came to L.A., I actually ended up uh, getting more traction as a comedy writer. And But I still kept one toe in the water of doing music here and there. I would get hired to do uh, little bits occasionally. And then gradually, I, things began to shift. And I would get more work as a composer and more, you know, the, as the comedy writing career dried up. Oh. Don't give up hope yet. There's, no. there's all, you never know what the future can hold. I'm an aging white guy in a, a in an industry that prizes youth and diversity. So I'm, yeah. You still seem pretty young yeah, to me. You know, but nobody nobody knows when you're a composer, they don't care. Exactly. You're, you you just hear the music. As long as the music yeah. sounds good, you're good. I'm youthful, and uh, you know, the whiteness. I'll just have to live with it. I guess. We can fix that in post. We can just do some little color, a little color correction, and fix that up later. Don't worry. I can. I know how to do all oh, that. Good. Oh, good. We'll we'll edit this. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> how long does it take to when they when you're working on an episode to you know go from the from the very beginning and the thoughts with what you want it to sound like to actually having it composed and you know all edited together? Like how long does that process take? How much collaboration do they say? Oh, we like this. We like this. We want you to change this. Or is there a lot more like are there a lot of other people involved in the process? Well, with this show in particular, it's uh, there. Uh, uh, there are there are notes, of course. You know, there's not a ton of score okay. um, there, luckily. Um, but there's a we're kind of in a, a rhythm now where like there's like three rounds of notes or so, and they're usually fairly small. So I would say beginning to end, it takes about two weeks per episode. That's not bad at all. It's not, it's not bad at all, no. It's, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty livable. Nice. Um, yeah, it was partly, I, I think if there were a lot more music in the show, it would, uh, it, you know, it might get a little exasperating. But being that they're so, there's not, there's not that much score. Um, and the songs, well, if, I'm, if I include the songs, I mean, those take me about a week. Well, they take longer because I have to record the cast. And, you know, that's, that, that stretches out over a, a couple of months. By, by the time we get people in to record their, their vocals and get that all cut together, and then there's another editing process, I don't know. That's endless. <laughs> yeah. Never quite have you. You always want to make little yeah, tweaks yeah, every, every now and then. Honestly, until the week they're mixing the music, it's, uh, there's a, a little changes being made here and there. So it's never, it's never done until the mixer, until they get it in the mixing house and are done with it. So. And even so, I'm sure there's always, oh, I wish we could have made this one little change here and there, right? Well, even, even so, like I'll, I'll uh, watch the episodes and I'll realize, like, oh, they, oh, they didn't use that one cue I did. Oh well, they somewhere at some point in the, in the last minute they decided, you know what, this works better without music. But by then, I don't care anymore. <laughs> by, by then, I'm so, there's a period of of time where you, you're you're very invested in the in the stuff you do, and then after a couple of months or so, like if I, I you just sort of you, you fall out of love with it and you don't really care. But yeah, do what you want with it. <laughs> Uh, that's why it's always harder to get notes immediately. Like if I send something in and I get notes like an hour later, what are you talking about? It's perfect. But if you give it a week, I'll, okay, fine. I don't care. Oh, that old thing? I don't care. <laughs> so you learn to, you know, not be super attached to like every little bit and not want to be like, oh, you want this change? No problem. Instead of, yeah. you know. That's, that's been my lesson with doing anything creative for a living. Mm -hmm. Like as a writer and as a composer, it's... Uh, the, the, there are going to be notes. You're working for somebody else. You're, yeah. you're, it's their vision. It's their project, and you can't. You, it's you know. You're just going to set yourself up for heartbreak if you. Gotcha. You drive yourself crazy if you're like, no, I refuse. I can't change it. Yeah. It's perfect. 
Gotcha, gotcha. You get, client gets what the client wants. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And luckily on this show, the, they're they're smart enough that they're usually right. Gotcha. Do you find it more difficult to write uh, the lyrics and the songs, or like kind of like the overall tone? Like, what's what what aspect do you enjoy most, and what part do you find like the most difficult? Like, I I I'll admit I've tried to like write songs like way back in the day, and I'm just like. I wrote three words, and this has taken me a week. I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah. Well, the, uh, in, you know, interestingly, I, when I was playing in rock bands, I got to a point with songwriting where I didn't have, I felt like, I don't have anything else to say. I'm like, the, my lyrics are just kind of bullshit. I'm, I'm not really, there's nothing really from the heart anymore. And I didn't have any lyrics to write. I could write melodies fine. But when I got into this... Even though the song, even even on the occasion when the songs aren't particularly hilarious, um, if there's something that you're given to say, and there is, you know, there's your your part of this storytelling process, then the lyrics come. The lyrics, are, you know, there's something to write, and um, so I kind of when they come easy, I enjoy the I enjoy the lyric writing uh, quite a lot. Um, and I feel like the music, the music is, I always feel like that. I got that. That's going to work out. The, the lyrics, there's always a, um, there's a revelation every time I get it. Like, I got it. I, I'm, pull, I'm pulling this off. Nice. So, um, I don't know. I guess the two are so interlinked, really. I'm not sure which I, uh, which I enjoy more. They, they, they've come to work together quite, quite nicely. So. As long as you get the message out there and you've, you've said what you've wanted to say. Yeah, you, get a, you get a few laughs in there, that's, you know, then you're good. How does it feel watching this show and having others watching the show if they've approached you about it and being like, that's my work, like, that's, that's on TV, like, this, is, this show is so, you know, it's a great show, this is my work. How does that f make you feel? That feels great. That feels, uh, that feels fantastic. I, I don't get a lot of people approaching me about it because I'm, you know, you know other, beyond my name briefly appearing on the screen, I'm a pretty, it's a pretty anonymous existence, you know. Uh, I'll get some, you know, flattering emails from time to time through my website, but um, no, I think a composer's world is pretty, uh, you know, we're pretty, it's pretty insular. Well, I'll be sure to send you an email, yeah, uh, you know, showering you with yeah, flattery yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, once you, once you see the show. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely watch it. Yeah, when you see definitely. the show. Um, you know, send me some nice emails. I'll, I'll be sure to do that. You'll get some from me in a, give it a week or two, but they'll be there. Okay, cool. I'll be looking for them. I wait, I wait with bated breath. <laughs> and that's turning another page. See you guys later. Hi, this is Mark Rivers. You're watching Gene Book Nerd. Keep doing it.